but this will be the biggest win of his career. He's got to get there. Wyman wins it. But that boy's second. And then a big gap to the rest of the Are we ready? Okay, brilliant. Right, uh, good, good afternoon, ladies and gents, and uh, firstly, welcome back uh, to myself. Uh, sorry for the delay in viewers and getting back to you. I'm here with uh, Mr. Jake Whiteman, who is a uh, part of the creme de la creme of uh, English and British middle distance running at the moment. The Correct. Scottish. Oh, sorry. Oh, the Scottish. Brilliant. <laughs> so my name's Jake Whiteman. I run 800 and 1500. So both my parents were marathon runners, so they're absolute donkeys. My mum ran 231. She went to Seoul Olympics and my dad ran 213 and didn't go to Olympics, but he ran a standard. But I've been like absorbed in the sport, so I didn't really have a choice. So my brother and sister both did it for a bit, but they got bullied out of it by my dad and I'm still here. So. And so with continuing your junior success into senior, obviously a lot of our fan base are of that age where they are either heading off into university or into the workplace. How have you been able to keep that success going? So university athletics is probably the best thing from transitioning between junior and senior because you're racing guys that are in the same position as you. So, But it's just about accepting you're probably going to have a few like rough years because you still feel like a kid like mentally i was still a kid you just got to ride with them because eventually you'll event you'll actually get used to running that age group and yeah as long as you keep your head viewers you may not know but our oh, my compatriot here has been yeah. crippled by an unfortunate stress fracture what have you learned from this injury and you know will, what's it taught you i think you can't really ever take for granted uh when you're in good shape so i had i think the last three four years the longest i was ever out with anything was five maybe seven days so I went 11 weeks without running this time and I think I was in such good shape before I got injured and usually when you're in such good shape you're probably treading the line about you probably are about to get injured or you're close to so it's a lot more important to have years without being injured and training at probably 90% than having one or two years training at 100% and getting crocked every few years so there's stuff that I know that I need to improve on now and hopefully it won't happen again. I think it's a lot of it is like coaching so I think my dad has been pretty sensible and when you've coached someone since they were like 13 it's easy to like track their progress and their mileage increase but it's yeah it's it's gonna happen at some point in injury so if anything was gonna gonna come it would be this year because I wouldn't want it in Olympic year and I wouldn't want it in the summer of 2019 so to happen around Christmas time it's not a good Christmas day when you can't really sit down on your backside because it's it's got to stress you but yeah it's it's happened at the right time. That really is a pain in the arse isn't it? Exactly, exactly. You mentioned your father obviously being a very successful coach how has that been for you growing up with this constant running presence in your life? I don't I know anything else he's the only guy that's ever coached me but I think it's helped me it probably not probably the older I've got the more I've I found it a good thing because I don't need him as much of a dad because I can look after myself just about now. So he knows me probably better than I do. And yeah, he's been able to like, like I said, like plan my whole progress through the sport and I hope it's gone how he's planned. And have there been any rocky patches in your relationship related to running? Oh, we, we argue a lot and the, the older you get, the more you sort of like are willing to argue because you don't fear your dad as much. But there was one, the worst argument I've ever had with him. <laughs> yeah, the worst argument I've ever had was uh, on a hill session. I think I was like, men to do 15 of these reps, and we do this like proper steep grass hill, like kills you. And I went off too hard, and I think. Not like, literally, that would be horrific. <laughs> no, I've, honestly, there's times where I think you have to get the defibs out because it's that, that bad. But um, I said to him, like, I'm done, I don't want to do any more after 12 because I was barely getting up it. So. Uh, he was like, get back down. And I went past him and I was like, I'm done. He was like, get back down. And I went past and I was like, this is shit coaching. <laughs> and then got back, finished the session, actually did it all right. And I, uh, I apologized him afterwards because I felt like a bit of an idiot. Because in the heat of the moment, you say things you don't really mean, don't you? Rush of blood to the head. You just mentioned your parents' marathon running pedigree about the Olympic dream that almost was for your father. Have they ever tried to push you down that avenue or you stayed down the road to success that is middle distance running? I think if you've ever seen my power 10, 5 and 10 Ks and you show that there's no, there's no career at the moment for those distances, it prolongs your career. So if I had the chance to actually 
raced over it maybe but I can't see myself being good over 26 miles when I'm only just about good enough at one so yeah we'll see. And what are your goals for the future? I mean are there any things that really spring to mind whether it be this season or, or Tokyo for example? So the timing of this injury has meant I will have a track season hopefully as good one as I hoped so we've got Doha that's end of September start of October so I'm lucky that it's so late and then this year like after that pretty much builds into Tokyo next year so I'd like to get a global medal if not a few somewhere so I need to try and start trying to do Wouldn't that. we all eh? I know it's easy to say isn't it and a lot harder to do so yeah that's the aim for my career to try and get as many medals from it as I can. And with the uh, Diamond Leagues do you think they are good for the sport in the sense that it encourages times over racing or do you think there ought to be more races that incentivize you know the, the notion of a race over just pacemaking? That's quite a good question actually, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, that's very good. Um, I think you need them because there's always going to be qualifying standards to hit, so you need a race like a Diamond League to be able to do in that, but unless you're trying to win them, you're pretty much just in for a ride, aren't you? So you're actually not learning that much racecraft, um, which is why I think you kind of need to exploit the other opportunities. Like I like BMC is still something that I think every athlete should be going and trying to actually race, because if you want to try and come into something where you know it might, might not be as quick but you need to be pretty sharp to try and win it then a BMC is pretty good whatever level you're running at. I think so outside of champs like the Diamond League is probably the best thing you can win isn't it and I actually got into so the race was on the Thursday and my agent got me into the race on the Monday night so I wasn't expecting to do it and I was probably like oh get towed around like, as you normally do but I always try and win a race I'm in like whatever standard and for some reason in that on that day they went off quick and then went off a bit too quick and came back and the opportunity was there to try and win it so like when that happens you have to do it don't you and, uh, live by the sword die by the sword <laughs> you love these don't you and are there any scouts you're hoping for in any of the upcoming diamond leagues i need to start trying to beat Jakob Britson a bit, Britson a bit uh, more uh, don't i but yeah the inga Britson family any opinions on them they're ridiculous athletes aren't they i don't know if you guys have watched um their series you probably have but the dad's, he reminds me a little bit of my dad, but not quite as much of a dictator. Uh, and he's got freedom to do with rather than one. But the fact you can be the slowest out of the three in your family and still be running, what, like, was he 332 still? Finally, as you may have guessed, the program, series, channel, whatever you want to call it, is tip for success. So what would your tip for success for all our amazing and very loyal viewers be? Uh, I think be patient. Like, I, I, was, I wasn't that good when I was younger and all of a sudden, from the age of like 16 and stuff I grew uh, all the consistent running started to come together and I think like during uni especially there's a lot of periods where people won't be running as well as they think and there's a lot of temptations to take you out of the sport but it's worth sticking in it because I'm lucky enough to be able to do this as a living rather than have a nine-to-five job like a lot of people from uni and I don't think I'd have done that if I'd have lost my head at any point so it's literally just being patient because you get out what you put in eventually. Do you have any, uh, Robbie Fitzgibbon, any, uh, any, would you like to say hi to him or any uh, opinions on him? <laughs> any thoughts you'd like to share with our fans, you know? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of like mythical rumours about Robbie, stories that are true and are not about him just, especially on camps, not looking after himself. Um, I've been away with Robbie a few times and he's a funny guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's a, he's a good guy to have around, but yeah, he's, he's done some bad things, I think, as well. <laughs> one of which were those dance moves on one of our episodes. Do you have any da- for, do you play Fortnite? I play FIFA a bit. FIFA? Yeah. What's, your, what's, your, what's, your, what's your go-to celebration? What, FIFA? Yeah, would you like to show our viewers? I usually just flick the buttons about, but sometimes you dab, don't you? That's <laughs> what you end up with. Thank you ever so much for watching. Jake, it's been a pleasure. Ha, ha, ha.